Vanity Fair just published an exclusive article with, I believe, some of the directors or some people that are in charge and in deep with the Lord of the Rings on Prime, or in other words, the Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power. There's a huge article with all sorts of goodies, kind of giving us some sneak peeks at what's going to happen, and they even published some more pictures and sneak peeks at actually who those hands from all those posters that we talked about in previous videos are belonging to, some of them at least. So we're going to break it all down here. I'm Landon. This is Sean. We're looking forward to talking about it with you guys. Let's go ahead and just jump right into it. So anyways, what, what are your thoughts? I, I know you um, didn't take a huge look at this. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I looked at all the photos. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't read the article and I didn't, I wanted you to explain them to me because cool. it through that lens, it's a lot better. <laughs> I'll be honest. I had a few alarm bells go off uh, seeing mm -hmm. this, but I'm still really excited. I think they're going to do a good job. Mm -hmm. There's just a few like Hollywood things that I think they're doing that it's like, why? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I, I would I would actually agree exactly with that, that there's a couple things that make me a little bit hesitant, a little bit nervous, but for the most part, I'm excited, and I think this is a lot of good news, mm -hmm. a lot of good things to come. So, um, yeah, and I think that's what a lot of people are saying on the internet. A lot of YouTubers are like, yes, good stuff, but also some things that are making me nervous. So, yeah, um, yeah we're just going to jump into it. I, I basically, how this video is going to go, I took some direct quotes, some direct lines from the article. I'm going to read them off. Sean and I will talk about them. And then we'll also talk about some of the like direct images and pictures that they released as well. Sneak peeks to behind the scenes and the characters and things like that. So that's how this is going to go. Let's just jump right in with um, just the first paragraph of of the article, which is kind of just opening up what the scene is gonna look like right as the show starts. So this is what it says. Galadriel's world is a raging sea. From the wise uh, erythrial elven queen that Kate Blanchett brought to Peter Jackson's acclaimed films, the Galadriel played by Morfid Clark is Amazon's upcoming series, The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power, is a thousand years younger, as angry and brash as she is clever. And certain, and certain that evil is looming closer than anyone realizes. By episode two, her warnings set her adrift, literally and figuratively, until she's struggling for survival on a raft in the storm-swept, thundering seas alongside a mortal castaway, Halbrand, um, who is a new character introduced in the show. Galadriel is fighting for the future. Halbrand is running from the past. Okay. That's the first paragraph. My first reaction is, remember the guy with the rope? Yes. That's who it is, I guarantee it. I am, I'm certain that's who it is. Yeah. I bet you it's right. Looking, and we'll, we'll put up the picture. I'll put it up for you to see here, Sean. Um, this is going to be Hal Brand right, here it is. Okay, this is Hal Brand right here. That definitely looks like the guy that you were talking yep. about. With the, yep. Yep. I'm guessing, I'm guessing, I, I'm still sticking with my theory. Noble kid. Mm -hmm. Let's escape. I mean, it said it right there, escaping from his past. So, yep. It says here in the caption, a new character who is a fugitive from his own past. What does that mean? I mean, we have some predictions in our other videos, but yep. it should be interesting. What I like about this, um, one of my concerns, but also what I like about this first paragraph, just looking at the actress they chose for Galadriel, she looks quite young. I mean, much younger than Kate Blanchett when looked, at least when she appeared in the role in Lord of the Rings. Um, I think that's okay. I don't mind that it's a different character or anything like that, but she's still 5,000 years old by this point. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, I don't know. I just hope that they don't give her, like, the angsty teenage vibe, <laughs> you know? Like, she looks like they yeah. could go that route. She's literally one of the wisest and most powerful elves at this point, you know, yep. by far. Yep. Uh, so, I hope they don't go that route. But what they did say in this first paragraph is that she senses that danger and evil is looming so she's kind of getting the getting the vibes that sauron's coming right. back or something like that in the books tolkien says that it's actually elrond and, Gil and gilgalad who get those vibes but i have no doubt that galadriel would have thought the exact same thing right and that's fine it, you know if they need to bring her in and kind of edit that a little bit mm. you know that i'm cool with that galadriel super wise like you said powerful um, yeah. sounds to me like she's going to be a little bit of an outcast which is not something that we're you know, we've seen her in that role yeah. before. Because, like, she's going to be like, oh, the doomsday. And everyone's like, ah, it's fine. That's what it sounds like. Like, um, people don't believe her. And it's like, no, she would be, like, one of the most wise. She is the most wise. Yeah. Of all the elves. Yeah. So, like, even like even Feanor, who's one of the craziest elves that made the Sil Silmarils and stuff. Like, it's said that she is more wise and more powerful than him. Even when, before they even came to Middle Earth. So, like, they, they have to, like, encompass that. I'm worried that they won't. Okay. Um, but we'll see. 
Um, I don't mind Halbrand being this, you know, new character. I think that could be a cool, uh, cool thing. So we'll see how that goes. Um, but let's, let's kind of go into the next paragraph here, or one of the paragraphs that I pulled out from the article. Their series, so the Amazon series here, will juggle 22 stars and multiple storylines, which the Lord of the Rings did fantastic, by right. the way. Tons of different storylines, tons of things going on at once. Right. Uh, that was great. I love that. Um, from deep within the dwarven minds of the Misty Mountains, I'm actually going to pause right here and talk about another line from the article. We will finally see the glory of Casa Doom. Yes. The cavernous ne uh, ne necropolis. What ne ne necropolis. Necro <laughs> necropolis carved into the Misty Mountains. So we're finally going to see like the mines of Moria. Like that's Casa Doom before they digged too deep and found the Balrog there. Like, uh, what, when did that happen, by the way? Was it really um, recent? Oh, yeah, because Gimli had been there, right? Um, I don't know if Gimli had been there because Gimli was living in the Lonely Mountain. Okay. Because he was after, right? you know, but uh, Balin and some of the other dwarves do go back to Khazad Doom to reclaim it from the dwarves. And that's when they find the dwar or the goblins or reclaim it from the goblins. And that's when they find the goblins there. They have a little war and the Balrog comes. Bad news. Um, but it, I think it was actually way before then that they dug too deep and found the Balrog. Okay. Because that's Durin's bane, right? So could we, in theory, see the Balrog wreck Khazad Doom? I think we could see that. Oh, I don't, oh yes. <laughs> I don't know the timeline of when that happens. I just know it was Durin's bane. And since we're talking about dwarves right now, one of these dwarves is confirmed to be uh, Durin, I believe. Durin the Fourth. So this one right here, the one that we saw his golden hands and his red beard, mm -hmm. this one is confirmed to be... Uh, let's see, as Prince Durin the Fourth, uh, Prince of the bustling subterranean realm of Khazad Doom. So I'm not sure when the Balrog was dug into and came out and wrecked everybody. I don't know if that was during Durin the Third, who maybe we'll see because this is the Prince, right? Durin mm -hmm. the Fourth. So maybe I think there's a chance we could see that. That would be sick. Oh, that'd be, oh, that's like my dream. <laughs> that would be so cool. But, anyways, so good stuff. I mean, no complaints there. Yep. With, with the dwarves. Yep. Me None neither. at all. And since we're talking about dwarves, we also have this um, African-American lady. I, I actually don't know if she's American. Um, but this, uh, let's see, it says she's played by Sofia Nomvete, maybe not American, I'm not sure, standing at Casa, Casa Doom's entrance. Okay, so she's so, like part of that. Yep, so she'll probably, maybe okay. she'll be the, the dwarven queen. Um, okay, the, interesting choice, like adding dwarven some, princess, adding says, some so. uh, you know, people of color into the Love dwarven. That, that, that's, cool that. that's interesting. On the dwarven front, I'm 100% down. No complaints, not a, even a single worry, yeah. in my opinion. I think we're good there with yep. those storylines. I agree. I, I, think um, it's, I think it's really cool that they're kind of... I, I mean, one thing is, no beards on the women. Yeah, I was wondering that. I was yeah. like, are they going to play it? Maybe they'll make some sort of funny joke reference. Yeah, yeah. Because Gimli, he said, mm. you know, that there are no dwarf... Or people, you know, they, hard to find they talk the same way and they look the same. So people think that the dwarf women don't exist. Yeah. Because they have beards. I Maybe we'll get a little bit. Maybe she shades. I don't know. Uh, yeah, but... I don't think they'll do it. I, I think, I think they'll just weird. commit to not having it just to, you know, too make weird. it clear. Um, just to, you know... Yeah. I, I, I could see that. Maybe they'll maybe they'll reference it, but I don't so, know. Okay, but anyway, we'll so going on with this line here. So from the from deep within the dwarf mines of the Misty Mountains to high politics of the Elven Kingdom of Lindon, which is like the big Elven Kingdom before Rivendell. Okay. Um, that's where Gil-galad ruled. It's like even more west of the Shire. It's like uh, I have a map here somewhere, but um, yeah, it's basically very western. Yeah. Middle Earth. So. Um, and in our last video, you can check that out, you know, we'll throw a little card here, card, yeah. um, where we talk about that picture of the elf, we believe, holding some sort of design, we think, mm -hmm. uh, possibly the design for Rivendell. Yes. Um, so that was a cool is that what you're kind of leaning in towards right yeah, here? Yeah, yeah, because Rivendell is definitely going to be constructed by the end of the series or planned to, because, you know, that's the timeline there. But yep. at the beginning, I don't think it's definitely not going to be there. It's just going to be... Uh, Lindon, which we talked about it, it, here in this uh, line. And then it also says, and the humans powerful Atlantis-like island Numenor. So oh, we're definitely yeah. going to get get some Numenorians um, in this first season. It's going to be a big part of the plot and obviously a big part of the issues that go on. So very, very cool stuff there. Uh, so far, no problems and no worries with, with what's going on so far that we've read. Um, let's see... All this will center, eventually, around the inc incident that gives the trilogy, trilogy its name, the yep. forging of the rings, 
uh, rings for the elves, rings for the dwarves, rings for the men, and the one ring Sauron used to deceive them all. It's the story of the creation of all those powers, where they came from, and what they did to each of those races. To each of those races. That should be cool. That is so cool. Because we, we know what it did to the men. We know that the elves you know, were smart enough to not use it, to put it away and hide it. Yep. And we know that the dwarves were too stubborn and, and greedy to really get um, deceived. deceived. But I want to see what that looks like. Because yeah. it, it gave them riches, which brought along dragons and screwed them up. Yeah. Um, and I want to see the corruption of the Nazgul, man. Well, I want to see it. <laughs> well, I think that is just an, such an interesting storyline that we're going to be able to, to witness. And hopefully, I mean, I think Amazon's playing the long game here, right? They mm -hmm. want their final season to be the fight, you know, against Sauron, right? Like, that's the end. Just like we had at the end yep. of the, the original trilogy. Lead up to you it. You know, lead up to that big fight. So, we'll see. I mean... I really, I hope that they get there. We'll see. Yep. Yep. So that's good. I'm excited. I think unlike other shows, what they kind of do is they plan out the first couple of seasons and then see how it goes, see what people like, and then they finish the planning the rest and film the rest. Mm -hmm. I think this one is mapped out from episode one to like the final episode of season five, I think is what yeah. five seasons. They probably so. have like the first two seasons written. Yeah. And then the rest, just like Good a, plans. a really yeah. healthy plan, like, oh, this is what's going to happen in episode 1 through 12, or however long. Do we know how long the seasons are going to be? Uh, I It's stated somewhere. I actually don't have it memorized. I don't remember, but I think it's maybe... Oh, gosh, Probably maybe. short. It's shorter. I think it's like eight episodes or something. Okay. I, I don't I remember I think eight exactly. episode seasons is like the sweet spot. I think it's good, yeah, yeah, unless you go to Supernatural, 15 seasons, 22 episodes. That's a little <laughs> much. But, okay, going on here. Um, this is an interesting part that I, I'm a little skeptical about. One original storyline centers on a sylvan elf named Arondir, played by Ishmael Cruz, Cordova, who will be the first person of color to play an elf on screen. I'm okay with that. Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, these days it's, it's pretty common to just kind of take an old, an old uh, you know, property like mm -hmm. Lord of the Rings and kind of make it a little bit more modern, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. by introducing. So I'm hoping... Because I, I don't like it when they just insert, like, people just just to do it, yeah. right? Um, so I'm, I'm hoping that it's, like, another group of elves that's, like, yeah. you know, where it makes sense culturally. Because mm -hmm. uh, that, that's my pet peeve is when it doesn't make sense in the plot. Like, it's we, just, like... We talked about in our previous video that um, it, it makes a lot of sense when it's civilizations, right? So, like, the Haradrim and the Easterlings and right. stuff. They were other civilizations where it made sense to have... You know, where they're in the desert, where yeah. they're going to be developing that melanin. You know, yes. it makes sense. Um, whereas, like... Like the dwarf one, it's like dwarves that live underground a lot of the time. So like, yeah. why would she need the melanin? I mean, but like, it, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter. So yeah. I'm okay with it. I think that's fine. Yep. That's not what I was saying with skeptical. What I'm skeptical about is this next part where he is involved in a forbidden relationship uh, yeah. with uh, uh, Bronwyn, a human village healer played by so-and-so, a British actor of Iranian heritage. I See, I don't like this. I, I actually don't like this at all because Tolkien was very careful with his like inter like interspecies relationships so like there was never and the hobbit did this very poorly i think mm -hmm. it was terrible where they did the like the elf tariel going you know having a romantic interest with the dwarf tolkien never did that he never alluded to that it just wasn't something that made sense and not just because they're different species but like there i mean you could go back to like well, when what they about, were created what, and stuff it just doesn't line up with what about story. elrond though isn't he a Yes, so Elrond, half elven, that's what he's known as. So mm -hmm. there were, there are three instances in all of his work. Um, I, I, actually, one of the YouTubers today referenced another one that I wasn't familiar familiar with. But three main inter, uh, interests between elves and men, right? And only three, only three times did this ever happen. Maybe that fourth time that I mentioned, but it's it's something that he did very selectively with very. Uh, there was always very heavy consequences to it too. So the first one was Baron and Luthien. Um, Baron was a man. Luthien was a was an elf. They want they fell in love. Uh, like Baron had to go and get a Silmaril from Morgoth, who was basically the devil, in order to win her hand. And even then, like she still had to forgo her elvish immortality to be with him. Um, then you have uh, Tuor, who was a man, and uh, Idril, who was the daughter of Tur uh, Turgon, um, back in the city of Gondolin. They had a thing as well. And that's where you get the lineage, I guess, yeah, the lineage does go up to Baron and Luthien too, but those were the parents, the grandparents, I believe, of Elrond and Elros. So they oh, okay. did come from, 
a man and elf. I don't want to get into too much detail here, but like that's the second instance. And again, there were there were heavy consequences there. Like they had to choose. Like Elrond, do you want to be elf or man? Uh, Elros, do you want to be elf or man? Like there was consequences to it that were very like eternal. Right. And then the last one, of course, is Aragon and Arwen. Um, and she had to forsake going to Valinor and being with her whole species, right? So there's big consequences. It was only done a few times, and it's very important to Tolkien, these relationships. On his gravestone were actually Baron and Luthien representing him and his wife. So it obviously means a lot, and I don't think it should be taken lightly, which is what they did in The Hobbit, which is what yeah. I think they're going to do with this. Like The Hobbit was just... It wasn't, like, serious at all. It was a weird, awkward romance. Yeah. No one liked it, right? Like... It was a Hollywood stunt, which you mentioned yeah. at the beginning of this video. Hollywood, like, they're just doing some things that, you know, they're, it's going to please the Hollywood gods. And yep. That's what I think this is. I'm not a fan. Maybe I'll be pleasantly surprised, but I, that's my biggest concern. Yeah, I mean, I really sincerely hope that they take it with the gravity that all, you know, every Tolkien fan yeah. has. Agreed. Um, we'll see. I, I don't trust them with this one. Yep. I don't. That's my biggest concern about it. But going on, we don't want to dwell too much on that one point. Um... So the series will also bring the elven smith, Celebrimbor, who Heck forges yeah. the rings. Of course. He has to be in it. He has to be. Right. Yeah, he's going to be one of the main <laughs> characters, at least as we start to really develop the Rings of Power storyline. Um, and his skill with metals and magic leading to the forging of the rings. And a canny young elven architect and politician named Elrond will rise to prominence in the architect. mystical capital of Lindon. Yeah. Architect. Good. Yep. We totally called that. <laughs> we called that. Sick. So yeah, he'll he'll build in Ladris, which is Rivendell at yep. some point, or he'll at least elude that that is his part plan. Of it. Yeah. yeah. Um, another story will follow uh, a sailor named Isildur, who we're definitely we know he's going to be one of the main characters. Right. Isildur. Years, yeah, is Isildur. <laughs> yeah. Year and here's a here's a sword. So. <laughs> Years before he comes, a warrior and cuts the soul corrupting ring off Sauron's hand. So definitely going to see him. That's going to be one of the main stories. Awesome. Um, and then, as the show begins, there are only hints of danger to come. As the show be yeah. So, I don't think in the first few episodes, or maybe even in the first few seasons, we're going to see Sauron or Anatar, Lord of Gifts. I don't know. I think they're going to be really strategic with with how they play out the story of how he deceives mm -hmm. the elves and leads to the fall of Numenor, things like that. So we're only going to get hints is what they say in this article. Yeah, cool. I mean, like, secret combinations, right? People getting yeah. together, creating these, like, secret clubs and causing issues. Yep. And I bet I bet there's going to be stirrings of evil, but mm -hmm. we're not going to really see... You know, like, in, in The Hobbit, where they had, like, the necromancer and we saw, like, this weird engagement. I bet we're going to see Galadriel looking into her her pool of mm. what's it called i actually have no idea what that's called oh but she's gonna be looking oh, yeah. into her pool and maybe she's gonna see They'll you know for these sure. evil things happening yep. and that's gonna be the these omens and I, that's what's gonna cause her to go off and get stuck in the ocean apparently with what's his nuts brand or i don't know i forgot the name already but um i think we'll start seeing like evil men start yep. to rise and maybe harass the elves and harass the Numenorians. Yep. Uh, that will be a big indicator, I think, to the elves that something bad's going on. I don't even think we'll really see much of the Numenorians at first, maybe, because in the books, at least, Gil-galad's like, hey, Numenorians, like, we got some big issues over here. Right. Like, he almost has to, like, persuade them to come and help. So I don't know if they'll play that out, but yep. probably not. I don't know. Question for you. Uh, were orcs like a... Are orcs like a free roam species? Like, do they just like run around or do they need to be made? Like, uh, no, it doesn't, there's not a ton of detail in Tolkien's writings on how they're made. Like in the beginning, it does say that he did like kidnap elves and stuff when they were trying to get uh, to Valinor and then found some way to make them reproduce. You can assume. And who knows? That's like the them, biggest debate between. Um, <laughs> but they're definitely in the second age for sure. Okay. Yeah. But Sauron was always the master manipulator and he was always getting men. Morgoth too, always getting evil men or corrupting men to be evil to join their side so we're gonna okay. see we're de we'll definitely see orcs goblins trolls hopefully some dragons maybe the balrog um evil things all over the place so cool yeah that'll be good let's just talk about some of these images really quick first reactions and then we'll wrap it up call it good but um this is the first image that they have this is the actress who's playing galadriel probably referring to her being at sea yeah you know, i don't know if there's really much to say it's a cool image yeah um yeah i, I mean what's it say here galadriel comes up for air that's the that's the she's caption. diving for something i don't know we'll see there might be something to it but let's just go on to the next one this one's cool so we were right with our prediction we did guess that i mean that looks like the armor and the girl that held the knife that we reviewed one of the posters right 
Um, so that's definitely Galadriel. Uh, Commander of the Northern Armies is what the caption okay. says. Cool. I mean, I see, cool. I see burning stuff in the background, so we'll see some battles. Cool elves don't look at explosions. So <laughs> that's what's cool about that. Um, yeah, I, I, like in, in The Lord of the Rings and in The Hobbit, like I really liked the power that they gave her. How she like basically snaps her fingers and disintegrates uh, orcs and stuff. I don't know if we'll see quite that much strength um, from her, at least at the beginning. Maybe towards the end she kind right. of figures it out. But like I said, she's 5,000 years old by this point, so she should know a thing or two. Um, here's, like we talked about, these two dwarvish images. So we'll just go on to this one. This is the, um, the Sylvan Elf. Right, that the African American guy. I don't know if he's American, but that will be playing um, that Sylvan Elf who will have the love interest. Sylvan Elves are that's like the lowest. That's like the green elves that uh, really don't know much. Uh, that's never went to like, that's like not Legolas and stuff because they're no. they're Mirkwood. Right? So here's how it goes. It goes the Noldor or like the um, Eldar, which are elves that were lived in Valinor, which is another continent besides Middle Earth where the gods lived. So that's what Galadriel is. She was one of the first ones too. I mean, she's okay. like, I mean, you have the like one of the original elves, mm -hmm. their kids, and then Galadriel. She's like one of the oldest of all time. Oh, okay. Um, then you have some elves that didn't migrate to Valinor that are the Sindar, but lived um, with Thingol, who was a very powerful elf, one of the brothers of one of those first elves. So it's it's a not quite to the level because they never went to Valinor, but like. Mm -hmm. On Middle Earth, the ones that stayed in Middle Earth, they're the most powerful. And then you have the Sylvan Elves, who just kind of wandered around Middle Earth, didn't really colonize as much, didn't have these large kingdoms, were largely unrelated in the first age to a lot of what was happening. So, so they're kind of like wild a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Even in The Hobbit, Tariel mentioned, she's like, you wouldn't let Legolas marry, uh, have an interest in a lowly Sylvan Elf like me. And he's like, you're right, I wouldn't. Kind of like. <laughs> so like, there's a tier system. So oh, he, okay. he would be the lowest tier elf. Doesn't mean he's any less epic or cool, but... Well, it does mean that, actually. So they basically have, like, a class system. Yeah. Yeah. Straight up. Or a caste system, you know, whatever yes. you want to call it. Yeah. They do. They really do. Um, but he will still be an epic fighter, I'm sure. Here's some behind-the-scenes footage of probably that first episode when they're lost at sea, so that's got to yep. be Galadriel and her friend, Halbrand. And then you have Elrond here. Elrond, half-elven. What, what, what are your thoughts? Because I have some opinions about this. Um, I mean, you look... They they're really trying to go for like a prequel mindset <clears throat> where they're like oh they're so young they're the yeah. they, but they should look the exact same as they did in Lord of the Rings so I I wish they would have picked a little bit older actors yeah me too like thirties yeah these, these look like twenties I recognize that they're trying to get like star power you know they're trying to pick some up and coming young people that yeah. they can kind of groom to be these big stars that they, they have in their bloom. pocket, right? Just like just like Game of Thrones. Yep. You know, Game of Thrones had so many new people that we see everywhere now. You Kit know? Harrington, for example. Um, yeah, Kit Harrington, uh, whoever, uh, Emily Clark. Um, yes, true. You know, yeah. even, even like Robert Baratheon, who I don't even remember his name. You know, they're everywhere. So yep. um, I think that's what they're trying to go for here. I wish that they kept him with long hair. Yeah. Like, so what they're trying to do here, I think, is differentiate elves, like give them a modern feel to it where they don't have to have the long elvish hair. Yeah. I think that's what differentiated elves in the first place. So why do you have to differentiate the differentiation? Yeah. You know, I, I just wish they, because that, I don't know, that was just kind of an epic thing that Peter Jackson did in all of the, in both of the, the trilogies. I, I, I'm yeah. a little bummed by that, but I think he looks like a good actor, so I think we'll be okay. Um, also says he's politically ambiguous, which... I don't know, but here's a picture of uh, the romance. The romance that we <laughs> talked about. Not a big yeah. fan of, but uh, we'll see how that goes. And then here's Elrond and Galadriel. Not a romantic interest. I sure hope that they don't go that way, because that doesn't make any that doesn't sense. make any sense, because they both have their romantic interests. Uh -huh. um, Elrond has his wife, who I think dies in a goblin den. What they said, and actually, the Fellowship of the Ring, they mentioned that. I just read that today or two days ago. And Galadriel has Celeborn who was another powerful elf you see in the right. Lord of the Rings trilogy. Tell me where is Gandalf? I have much desire to speak with him. <laughs> <laughs> it's like his only line. <laughs> yeah. But they will be good friends and I think big uh, big characters going in together. Yep. So, And then, um, yeah, here's the romantic interest of the elf. You know, he said that he was, yeah. he was like a apothe apothecary healer kind of person. Interesting. So. We'll see. Oh, and then, yeah, these guys with giant freaking moose horns. moose horns on them i love the fact that they'll introduce some new animals it seems yeah um that's cool to me but... i'm always i'm always cool with new like new things they said that we're gonna see parts of middle earth that we've never seen before love it i hope we see 
like some really out there places. Maybe we'll see some rhino fonts instead of like the Aldi fonts. <laughs> I don't know, that's stupid. But <laughs> anyways, that's, that's going to wrap it up for us, I think. We've probably talked to you off already. Lots of cool things coming out um, with this uh, article. This gives us a lot of things to hope for. Should be getting a trailer. I mean, the rumor is during the Super Bowl, so... That might give me a reason to actually watch the Super Bowl. We'll yep. see. Um, but anyways, let us know below what your predictions are. What are your thoughts now that we're getting some more content to go off of? Are you more worried, less worried? A little bit of the same. Let us know in the comments below. I'm Landon. This is Sean. Subscribe to the Cyberspace. Got lots more content coming for you. Absolutely. We'll see you next time.